Professor Hugh MacDonald Sinclair was a passionate nutritionist. He trained as a biochemist at the University of Oxford Oral College, later as a medical doctor, and then became a reader in nutrition at Magdalen College in Oxford. And actually was one of the first academics to have nutrition in his title. Clearly Sinclair was something of a, a hoarder of his paperwork. So we have everything, we have all his passports, we have diaries, we have all kinds of things that have come to us and that give us a very rich picture of his life. He was a brilliant man, but his working methods weren't always conventional. This is one of the reasons why he was overlooked a great deal in his lifetime. Hugh Sinclair was really interested in looking at the diets of the Inuit populations that were previously known as Eskimos. Although they had a very high amount of dietary fat, they had a low risk of cardiovascular diseases. He tried to get funding uh, from many different sources to do this research, but unfortunately was unable. So he resorted to self-experimentation, which we wouldn't advocate today. Uh, I must explain carefully, Milton, what this is. Uh, this is my Eskimo diet experiment, where for 100 days I took nothing but seal, fish and water, a very difficult diet. During this time, he cut himself on the arm in a, in a standard way to measure his bleeding time. And it went from three minutes before he started the diet to over 59 minutes when he completed the diet. This would be important in relation to cardiovascular risk reduction because this would reduce what we know as clotting, thrombosis, and therefore will reduce the risk of a heart attack. The other area of important nutritional contribution that Hugh Sinclair made was that of setting up what was known as the Oxford Nutrition Survey. This was to look at the diet of the population within the UK to try and inform rationing for the government. Because this was a report commissioned by the government, it was never published and it wasn't out in the public domain. And so it's a really interesting and rich source of data. We opened uh, in October 1995 and there were three of us in the unit. We have now grown to over 90 members and these include PhD students, academics, postdocs, research nurses and technicians. Our research is well recognised um, within the UK and in the world. And so I think that Hugh Sinclair would be very proud that his money and his legacy have been put to the use that he wanted to dedicate his life to and that's nutrition research and furthering the importance of diet in promotion of health. One of the things about Hugh Sinclair is he didn't really publish his work and he didn't even complete the analysis in many cases. This is one of the reasons perhaps that his work has been, has been hidden but not everyone's record of their life and work can survive or can survive to such an extent and be useful. And I think that's what makes him unusual is that it lives on and the legacy of his work is able to live on.